Welcome back to my channel guys. Today we're going to talk about how to root divide your plants, whether you want to multiply them or just get them out of the soil so that you can propagate them in LECA. So I'm doing this beautiful pink arrowhead syngonium today and I don't really like the soil that it came potted in. I can see these little pellets which are big box brand fertilizers and sometimes those cause chemical burn. So I really want to save this plant and try to divide it, see how many little plantlets I can get out of it, and then I will be propagating in LECA, and you can click here to see my video on LECA potting. So the first thing I do is a routine check for any nodes that are pushing out aerial roots and that can be snipped and water propagated. So I wanted to do this first, and as you can see, I found one already here. You just want to take some sanitized scissors or shears and chop about a quarter of an inch below the node. So once you do this, you can give the roots a little baby trim if you'd like to. This one that I already chopped actually has a second node on it, which is a bit rarer in my experience for arrowhead syngoniums to have multiple nodes that are available for chopping. So I'm just going to give them a snip here. And then I'm just going to gently keep combing through the stems and try to find any more nodes that I can chop before I completely take the plant out of the pot. So once you've run out of aerial roots to chop up, we're just going to start breaking apart the plant. So ideally, you want to flip the pot upside down and gently remove the contents in one big chunk and being careful not to pull from the delicate foliage or the stems. Sometimes if there's drainage holes in the bottom of the pot and the soil has already hardened, you can kind of push from the bottom, push through those little drainage holes to encourage the plant to plop out in one big piece. So I like to remove the plant either directly over a trash can or a box for collecting the soil depending on if I can reuse it or a Tupperware that I've placed in the sink like you're seeing here. And it can be messy, so just make sure that you're being mindful that no big chunks of soil or debris end up going down the drain because you don't want to clog it. Now, this plant has been root-bound for so long that its roots actually grew through the bottom of this container. And luckily, I was able to pull this little drainage plate out without injuring the roots much more. But typically, this means that the plant is literally begging to be released from its container. It's trying to be root-bound, which is where the root circles around the plant multiple times, but it couldn't be root-bound because of that plate at the bottom, so it just basically grew out the bottom extremely. And see here, I'm kind of removing it and being very careful not to cause more damage to those roots. Once you've got your plant out of the pot, you're just going to tickle the roots just gently to break up the soil that's compacted around the roots as best you can without causing damage. This is how we loosen up the root ball. Now, at this point, many people will advise you to take a sharp knife and cut the plant into sections to root divide. And while that is an option, and we will do a video on that in the future, the roots are already undergoing a small state of shock by being removed from the soil. And this is normal, so don't worry but we just really don't want to add insult to injury, so we're going to try our best to root divide without a knife just by kind of working through the roots and separating them as they will give. So luckily, I did not have to use the knife method for this video, and I try as much as I can not to use knives or scissors on the roots unless it's absolutely necessary. One, because it causes trauma, and two, because if you do use knives and they're not completely clean, you can actually cause infection in the roots, and you really don't want that. So if you break down the soil enough around the roots, you will find that even the most root bound of roots can kind of be teased apart just by gently working them with your fingers like you're watching here. So sometimes running it underwater to get rid of more soil helps a little bit just to get rid of those last little pieces of soil, but just make sure that you're cautious about not clogging the drain. So before you start this process, make sure all the bigger chunks have been removed. At this point, you want to give your plants a really good rinsing. And don't be shy. In nature, these things get rained on all the time, and the foliage is probably going to be really grateful for the wash, especially because over time, dust and debris from the air accumulate on the guard cells of these leaves, and that makes it much more difficult to photosynthesize. So though there is going to be a little minuscule amount of shock from transplanting the plant, it's going to be relieved to have clean foliage and trimmed up roots. So that actually leads me into my next point. Since these roots are clearly pretty long and distressed and straggly, I'm just going to trim them up a bit. And I think people get nervous to trim their roots because root rooting is what we kind of aim for, but think of it like hair. You need to give it a healthy trim to encourage more growth. So since I want these to be able to continue to grow and push healthy roots and foliage, I'm going to trim them to about 4 inches down their length. And as you can see here, 
I was prepared to use scissors if I needed to, but I was actually able to tease apart this plant into individual baby plants. So some of these I'll propagate in water, like the ones that I chopped right below the aerial notes. Others I'll put in LECA, and some I might ship out in upcoming boxes or even give as gifts to friends. But overall, propagating is just such a great way to multiply your plants easily. And here, as you can see, I was actually able to get five individual baby plants out of this one mama plant that was in the pot. Now, I definitely could have taken scissors to some of these bigger chunks and divided them more, but you actually do risk losing parts of the plant just because you're going to be chopping and severing connections. So for the purpose of this video, I'm quite alright with having a few larger chunks to pop back up for myself and then give a few others away. Until you're able to put them into their new respective medias, I like to keep the roots or nodes in some fresh nutrient water, and I typically go a little heavier on the FluoroGrow, which is the green component of the General Hydroponic series, which just helps push root and foliage growth faster. And I also include SuperThrive, which helps with the inevitable transition it's going through, and you can click here to watch my video on nutrient water. But here, I am just arranging all of these plants in a clean pot with a little bit of nutrient water keeping the nodes or the roots wet and safe. You can also click here if you've already got the nutrient water mixed up and you're ready to watch my video on potting up your plant in LECA. Thank you so much for watching this video and any of my videos, and feel free to check out my website. It's www.lauraloon.com. You can find my blog posts on there. I've got blogs on LECA, on semi-hydro, water propagation, and you can find those there, shop, stay up to date on my videos, and much more. So I would really love for you to join the mailing list and follow along on this journey. There's a lot more to come, including mycology and herbology, more botany things, all types of semi-hydro and hydroponics. So that is my little spiel on my website. And if you found this video helpful in any way, please, please, please give it a like, a comment, subscribe, share with your planty friends. I would absolutely love to expand this little community. Until next time, much love.